Hi guys, uh, welcome to GTA and Abacus Learning. This channel is dedicated to finite element method or finite element analysis using Abacus software. We'll be focusing on several numerical problems or numerical examples where we'll solve those examples using analytical methods and then model the same in the Abacus and then compare the results. Abacus is a very versatile program where you can uh, model almost everything and you can actually visualize their response under a certain loading the loadings may be displacements velocities accelerations change in temperatures and so on i will not be going through the theoretical derivation of stiffness matrices used in bar elements or beam elements uh, you can actually go through your notes again if you have a domain like this or a big section this domain is discretized into several smaller parts or like you can discretize it like this into several small smaller parts or if you have a beam element like this it can be discretized into several uh, smaller sections like this so these elements here these tiny elements which are formed by the discretization of the main element or the, or the main section or domain are called defined elements in here uh, defined elements are the rectangular sections the defined element uh, method is applied in order to obtain displacements or forces stresses strains energies deflections slopes in different structures uh, there are several terms uh, we need to be familiar with before uh, we move into the actual numerical problems the first term is the degrees of freedom by degrees of freedom we mean number of independent uh, displacements or rotations uh, which are required to define or describe a structure for example if you have beam like this and then uh, let's say it is hinged here and we have a roller here then if you look into this section only we'll see that this hinge only allows the beam to rotate it doesn't allow it to uplift or move in this transverse direction or horizontal direction which means that it only has one degree of freedom when you look into the roller it allows rotation as well as movement in the horizontal direction but it doesn't allow uplifting movement in the vertical direction so it has one and two two degrees of freedom degrees of freedom uh, if you have a beam that is a cantilever beam then if you look at this point this point is not allowed to rotate or move in vertical or horizontal direction which means that it has zero degrees of freedom the next term is node a node is a coordinate location in space in which the degrees of freedoms are defined let's say for example in the above structure we have a beam here these points can be considered as nodes or if you have a beam element that has been subdivided into different tiny elements then the ends of each element comprises of a node now if you solve this then the response of the structure the uh, displacements or forces are obtained at these nodes for example if you have a if you have a beam and it has five nodes and if you have a beam which only has three nodes then if we solve both of the beams under similar loading conditions then we will obtain displacements and forces at five nodes here as compared to three nodes here which means that 
the response here will be closer to the exact uh, solution or the analytical solution of this problem rather than this one so the more nodes you have the better approximation is your uh, solution so you can get a satisfactory result the third term is the element itself these elements are generally the building blocks of your structure the element can be defined as a mathematical relation that defines how the degrees of freedoms of a node are related to the next node these elements can be line elements sorry these elements can be line elements or can be rectangular or triangular for example in shell if you are looking at in a in a shell element then it can be divided into several rectangular sections smaller elements or it can have triangular elements like this now these rectangular elements or triangular elements will have nodes the number of nodes depend upon the accuracy of your analysis if you have more nodes the more accurate is your solution but it may take longer time to analyze and the triangle can have three nodes or six nodes these are 2d elements generally are used in solving the plane stresses or strains of a plate or, or a membrane or a shell and these are called the 1d elements 1d elements and then if you have a, a slab or a long beam like this we can subdivide this beam in tiny elements uh, if you take one out then you'll see that it is kind of a small hexahedron it is a 3d element or we can have kind of a tetrahedron as well where it has four faces and these will also have several nodes here so four five six seven eight nodes this tetrahedron will also have nodes here or in the middle so these are the 3d 3d elements there are some other elements as well for example which are known as the axisymmetric elements which means that they are uh, symmetric about an axis for example a conical section like this which is symmetric about the vertical axis here and if we take this element out now this element will be known as the axisymmetric element or a ring element these types of elements are used in the analysis of gas tanks or nozzles or sharps so these are various types of elements which we will be using in abacus to solve various numerical problems as i mentioned before i won't be going through any theoretical derivation of equations but i'll be solving the various uh, scenarios various structural problems or connections and then comparing them with the abacus results and so we can also visualize what is happening there and why we are getting those sorts of results which i hope will help you to better understand the structural systems the simplest problem you might come across would be rings in series for example let's take three spins in series so that's spring one spring two and spring three where the ends of spring one and spring three are fixed now we define our nodes third and fourth uh, let us label them or label this one as one this one as two this one three and this one four you'll be provided with the stiffness of the springs now this is spring number one 
spring 2 or spring 3 these are the finite elements and these are the nodes here now let us say that we have a force acting at this node here let that be force P where P equals to 5 kN Newton. It is of interest to find what are the displacements at node node 3 and 4 and what will be our forces at nodes 1 and 2 given all the above conditions. Now for this in theoretical analysis you would obtain separate matrices of for k1 k2 and k3 and then add them together depending upon the degrees of freedom for example if you take a free body diagram of k1 that's your k1 let this be k2 and k3 then each of the ends will have nodes that's the free body diagram of the above structure we'll assign directions to our degrees of freedom since we are concerned only in the axial direction in the springs we can just consider this as a direction one in the horizontal x direction so your degrees of freedom will be like in your theoretical analysis uh, you will find your stiffness of this spring number one as similarly you also get k2 as finally k3 as then you form your global matrices by adding the ever stiffness matrices depending upon their location or depending upon their degrees of freedom then you can write your general equation of equilibrium where your force vector can be which will be equal to your kg matrix times your displacement vector where these are the horizontal displacements at the nodes to solve this problem we'll have to assign boundary conditions for the boundary conditions here your u1 and u2 will be 0 0 so this matrix this equation will reduce to which will be equal to just take this one out and put it here here at node number 3 and node number 4 we have assigned uh, forces as 0 kN here and 5 kN here so we actually know the values here that means we can solve that equation and obtain our displacements u3 and u4 similarly after you have solved u3 and u4 you substitute these values back into this equation to obtain the force vector so these are the forces and these are the, the maximum displacements that you'll be getting under the loaded condition now we can plot this response in the spring system let's say that this is our initial position of the springs now you see here that your u3 and u4 have moved 10 by 11 and 15 by 11 that's around like 0.9 millimeters and 1.6 millimeters or so this point here has moved in this direction and this point here has moved in this direction now these boundary conditions are locked which means that this one will stretch out a bit and this one will also stretch out a bit and this one will 
will compress like this so this point moves to this point and this location will move to this location by a distance given by u 4x and by a distance given by u 3x now because of this movement here it will produce a reaction which is given by f 2x in opposite direction to the uh, to the direction of your displacement now this is your deformed shape and these are the reactions and displacements that we are getting from this analytical procedure using the stiffness matrix now let us uh, model this uh, in abacus and see what results we get and we will also be able to visualize what is happening and how this spring system is responding we'll also compare our solution to the solution given by the finite element analysis before i start modeling the spring system i would like to introduce you to the interface of the abacus which is a graphical user interface which means that you don't have to code your structural model you can use your mouse pointer and the options provided on the screen to create your model now before i get started make sure that you have these views option here because they allow us to navigate or rotate our model in certain uh, directions if you don't have these when you open your abacus uh, then just go to view and then toolbars and click on views uh, so they appear so let's just adjust our toolbars here so this is your abacus interface and this is generally uh, like a tree these are the steps for modeling and then finally analyzing your model now let us start modeling our spring system it is very easy to model the spring system we can just go to interactions and create reference points so this is a coordinate based system so you can just write coordinate 0 comma 0 so that's your reference point 1 that will act as a node for your finite element analysis in this problem we have four nodes so let us create another node at a distance at say 100 comma 0 so you'll have another reference point at 100 comma 0 and then let's create the other one 300 comma 0 200 comma 0 so you have four reference points here now to create the springs you go to assembly and then uh, go to engineering features and then click on springs so this will just uh, create your spring model let's just say this is the first one is spring number one continue and then you click on two nodes where you want to assign the spring one and two so click done now here you want to assign your spring stiffness which is uh, one kilonewton per millimeter abacus is kind of a general program i mean the units that you provide here to make parts or to make your model will define the units of your response here i'll be using newton and millimeters as my units so i'll just put 1000 newton per millimeter so that's the spring number one now we can create another spring here spring number two and this will be 2000 newton per millimeter and then we create another spring here spring three let's click on these two and then assign the spring the stiffness so we have created our model here it's so easy to create a spring model then you go to steps and you can just say static analysis click on static journal for this one and incrementation make sure that you have 
assign this as a very high value because you don't want your analysis to stop the number of increments that is it is making per step are not enough to solve the problem or or reach the equilibrium the first increment size will be 0.01 minimum as 9 and the maximum as 1 and we have assigned this as time period 1 that means that this will analyze our uh, model up to one seconds then we can just go to output request and then so you will see here that there are various options that you can uh, you can select as your results I mean if you want to see your stresses you click on stresses if you don't want to see your stresses just unclick on them and or if you want to see just components you can just click on misses or just have maybe stress components and invariants but I'll just use pre-selected defaults here which means that I'll just get stresses I'll get strains plastic strains I'll get displacements uh, I don't need velocities for this one uh, I'll get reaction forces and forces and moments this value here means that when you are getting the output you specify accuracy of the output if you assign one here it means that the the program will store your value per step if you put 10 here the program will store your values at every 10 steps which makes the program run faster but it doesn't provide you the accurate or fine results so I'll just put one here and then if you go to your loads now for this one I'll just write load P which is a concentrated force you click on concentrated force and click on this point here because that's the point where we have applied our force that's 5 kN so click on done 1 means the x direction 2 means the y direction and 3 means the z direction so we are applying our force in the x direction in the positive x direction so we'll put 1 here that's the scale factor which I will define later just put 0 0 and you can create your amplitude here so that's your your force click on tabular you can just assign 0 0 and say because we are analyzing up to one second one here and that's your final load as 5000 Newton this is kind of scaling factor this is this will scale your force by the value assigned here for example if I put 2 here and we have if we click on amplitudes that we have just created 5000 that will give us a value of 10,000 newtons so I'll just put 1 here so you can see the force has been assigned in the positive x direction now let's move into the boundary conditions so I'll just put fixed boundaries you can just click on displacements and, and rotations so our this end and this end are fixed which means that you can just click on three of them and assign them zero it doesn't allow any of the three directions that's it these two are your boundary conditions now you can save your model and then we just go to analysis and jobs we just create the first job here which is model one continue and then okay then we just click on here and then submit you can monitor our analysis if you see your if you see values here which means that your program is running we just dismiss and then click on results so here you will be able to see your spring system now when you go here you'll be able to see different alphabets which mean different responses this one means displacements this one means stresses this one is your reaction forces this one is restraint and this one is contact forces so just click on displacements which you want to see and then you can click on this view and see how this one deforms under the applied loads we click on animate so you'll be able to see that when you pull here this spring actually contracts and these two expand as we saw here 
this one contracting and this one and this one expanding and now we can slow this down by click on clicking on animation options and you can just click here just to make it slow okay so these are your displacements here in magnitude if you want to see the directions of your displacements you can click on this icon here and then it will show you the displacement directions you can play here it will show you the displacement directions and contour in the arrows which means that this spring is deforming in this direction and the red means it has moved 1.364 millimeters let's go to the end you can click on this one and see this is in green which means that it may be around down here and 0.9 millimeters so if you want to see the values click here and then go to your field output and then unique nodal and then you can obtain your uh, your time history of your displacement since we are only concerned about just displacement in u1 in the x direction you click on u1 and then click elements so you can go edit selection and then click on this point and then click save when you click save uh, your data will be saved here and you want to save you want to rename your data you want to rename your your data as point three displacement and you can click edit again and then click on this one click on save okay so and then you can rename this one as well so that is point four displacement if you want to obtain forces then go to variables and select this one you can go to your reaction forces and click on rf1 you can click edit selection and click on this one again click save okay then you can rename this one as point three force and let us also select this one here sorry this one here click on save okay and then you can rename it that's our point to force I can just click on this one again click save uh, rename it as point one force Let us also obtain force for our node 4. Save. Okay. Can rename this to point 4 force. Okay. Now, if you double click on these values, you'll be able to see your displacements. Let's see this one here. So, in the time step of one second when the load reached five kilonewtons at point four you will see this value if you double click on it you can just get the maximum value of of 0 0.9 i'll just copy this and paste it here let's paste it somewhere somewhere here that's our u3x and i'll also obtain our displacement at point four and then double click on it copy this one and paste it here so that will give us 1.363 from abacus again let us also get the forces forces at one which reaches a negative of around 0.9 so you can just double click on it and this one copy that i'll just paste it here and we'll also obtain 
or force at 0.2 10 by 11 that is 0 0.909 which is similar and let's see what is 15 by 11 that is 1.363 that is also the same and again that's the same and 45 by 11 the same value so that's our solution and if you click on this one you can see your displacements or you can see your stresses your reaction forces as well click on this one so yeah you can see your reaction forces if you want to see the maximum location of it you can just go to options and contour and you can click on show location so it will apply so it will show you the location of your maximum force and minimum force let's see let's click on this one so it will show the location of your maximum force there You can specify you can change our scale here to a different value of minimum and maximum because sometimes we want to focus on certain range of stresses or forces we can change these values and then this will automatically scale uh, itself and if you go to common you'll find deformation scale factor where this will scale your motion or displacement for example if I do one here and then play you won't be able to see the formation now when I say 22 now you'll be able to see it moving because this has been scaled by a factor of 22 you can scale it by a factor of 100 as well like this so let it be just auto yeah you can actually click here and label your elements that's one element three element you can say face label if there are any you can click on note labels that's first node second fourth and third so this is our solution here now it is also easy to export the solution to your let's plot this one point one force that's your boundary condition force at node number one Point two. That's at the other, other boundary condition. Third one is zero. Fourth one is also zero. And if you go to point three displacement, you'll find going point nine and then point one three. Uh, it is also easy to export these values to Excel. You can just go edit and then you can just select all of it. And this is your time in seconds and this is your force in Newton now if you look at our solution we have our F1 force we have our F2 forces we have uh, U3 and U4 which tend to match out with the values we have obtained from Abacus so it is easy for us to see the motion or see how the systems interact this is one of the fundamental problems which is the Princeton series that you generally get in computational techniques or, or mechanical engineering yeah this is it this is our first basic problem we have uh, solved using abacus and analytical method we have compared the results and we have seen that Abacus is uh, basically based on the FEM system, the methods we do analytically, which have been incorporated in the system uh, through iterative processes. By iterative, uh, we mean that certain procedures are repeated uh, several times in order to obtain an equilibrium or a satisfactory uh, result. Thank you for watching this channel till the end.
Please do comment, share and subscribe this channel. Thank you.